or pass. Day after day, the same messages flood into dealers. The same question, over and over. I've been offered this watch at my AD, what would you pay for it? Is this Rolex worth taking from the AD to flip? or should I pass on it? Three Rolex retail price increases in the space of 12 months, and for the last two of those, no real knock-on effect for secondary market values, unlike what we are used to seeing. So that poses these real questions. Is the wait list worth bothering with if you're in the market for just a quick flip profit, and which watches have their trade value fallen below their retail? Should you flip or pass? What's up guys, welcome back. Now I know that if I even mention the word flippers, my subscriber rate will probably tumble and fall in half and I know I'll have a bunch of hate messages in the comments, but bear with me because the reality is that I would say at least half of the people whom are on wait lists at Rolex authorized dealers are either in the market to make a quick flip profit on that watch or they are on that wait list because they know that it's relatively risk-free to do so if they get that phone call. Oh my God! Okay, it's happening. Everybody, stay calm. What's the procedure, everyone? What's the procedure? Everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody, just calm down. And they therefore pull the trigger on that watch. They know that they're not really spending any money. So therefore the actual purchasing decision isn't that much of a difficult one to make because if they don't like the watch, then they know later on down the line or historically that they would have been able to just sell it to a secondary market dealer like myself and get their money back or even make a profit. And that has been the theme for a couple of years now. Obviously in the last few months that has changed and it has changed significantly with three Rolex retail price increases. Now, I made a video a few months back where I predicted on the second price increase, I believe it was for 2022, that the same thing would happen as what usually happens. If Rolex increased their prices at retail, then the secondary market follows suit. It didn't work. The secondary market values didn't respond and didn't really react to that retail price increase. So all that happened was is the price gap between retail and secondary market and user price actually closed. To the point now where not many people may know it, but there are a significant number of watches where their trade value is actually sitting below their retail value. The reality is if you want to go and flip that watch quickly to a secondary market dealer like myself, there is a trade price. These trade prices aren't really that well known. So there's a, there is a real risk now that there are people taking that call from the authorized dealer that don't really want to buy the watch are buying because they believe they're buying risk-free. This video is absolutely relevant because I'm gonna go through some Rolex watches that you may be absolutely surprised to hear. The trade value now sits below the retail value, some which have tumbled quite a lot but still sit slightly above their retail in trade. Let's kick this off then with a rather controversial one, one that may surprise you, the Rolex Daytona, yes. This is a Rolex Daytona that I would pay less in trade price than what they are going for at retail. This is the Rolex 116503. So of course this is the two-tone Daytona, which for quite a while wasn't really liked, but always really traded or sold on the secondary market for as long as I can remember of being in the business um, above the retail price. And yes, they do still sell above the retail price, but the trade price is around about the same. So the retail for one of these now, after three price increases in 12 months from Rolex, sits at £16,100, and I would pay you around about the same price. So the Rolex Daytona two-tone with white dial, flip or pass? That is a pass, because why would you buy with the intention to flip if you could only flip it back to me, a secondary market dealer, for the same money or potentially even less? Continuing the theme with Rolex Daytonas, this is the Rolex Daytona Paul Newman on an Oysterflex. Flip or pass? 
This one, guys, is a solid flip. Still, you would make yourself a quite a tidy profit of £4,700. The retail price on that is £25,300, and a dealer should pay you around £30,000. So that brings you a profit of £4,700. Moving on to the GMT Master line, the newly released Rolex GMT Master 2 Sprite. So this is the left-hand drive model with the crown and date window on the opposite side of the dial than what we're used to. This exploded onto the scene when it was launched nearly a year ago now at Watches and Wonders at a end user price of £45,000 and there were some people who were paying that money nearly a year on. The situation is completely different as I predicted prices for that plummeted on the secondary market. So buying that at retail would cost you £9,600. A dealer would pay you around £16,700, leaving you quite a tidy profit of £7,100. End user price now for one on a Jubilee sits at around £20,000. On an Oyster, you can pick them up for slightly under that, around the £19,000 mark. So a massive difference in price there, but it still remains a watch which would represent a good flip fresh out of the authorised dealer. Now, of course, at the moment, this is the one watch that everybody is talking about with Watches and Wonders on the horizon in March. This one, many predict, will be discontinued. You know, it is a little bit of an oddity, obviously being a left-hand drive. Rolex have never really done that before in the modern collection. I personally see the opposite happening. I can envisage a situation where Rolex say, oh, that left-hand drive was a very successful watch. It garnered a lot of media attention and therefore we'll bring out another three or four of them, maybe a left-hand drive Submariner or a Daytona. And what will happen is to the GMT Master Sprite, prices won't go up on that one. They'll actually fall because it's no longer as special as it was before and it's no longer an oddity. Moving on then to another very popular watch at the beginning of 2022, the Rolex Yachtmaster 40. This particular one is with the blue dial. Flip or pass? In this case, guys, it is now a pass, yes. After three Rolex retail price increases, the trade value of this watch no longer sits above the retail. You would pay £10,350 for this at the authorised dealer. A dealer would only pay you around £10,000, which is $12,300, and you would realise a loss of around £350 on that. So that is a pass. Does it mean that wait lists will start to shorten and less people will put their name down for a yacht master because that incentive of making easy money at the end of it is no longer there. Yes, wait lists are likely to shorten, but we must remember that whilst the trade price sits below the retail, the end user price that I would charge for that watch still sits slightly above the retail. So it's still the better option for a consumer to be sitting on that wait list to buy that watch at the cheapest price that they can possibly find. I think that's a, a perfect situation for the authorised dealer for Rolex. What isn't a perfect situation, I'll tell you now for them, is where I can actually sell that watch or I would be able to sell that watch at below the retail price and obviously be paying significantly below the retail price and trade price. If that does happen, then wait lists will shorten significantly and we might have a situation for certain watches where there are no wait lists at all. That could absolutely happen if Rolex plow on with yet another retail price increase. If we see another one or two this year and the secondary market doesn't follow suit, you've seen the margin there, we're only talking about £350. I would probably sell that watch £500 over the retail. If they increase the retail price on that one, say another 10% this year, then suddenly that watch is no longer for sale on the secondary market above the retail. Moving on to Datejusts then, the Rolex Datejust with the black dial, Jubilee bracelet and fluted bezel with diamond hour markers. Is this a flip or a pass? Guys, this is a pass. This will lose you money if you have the intention of flipping this immediately out of the authorised dealer. The AD retail on this is £10,250 and a dealer will only pay you around £9,700, resulting in a loss of £550. And you'll be surprised to know that many Datejusts now are now trading below the retail price. 
One particular example that is doing still quite well on the secondary market is the Rolex Datejust Azzurro with the Jubilee bracelet and fluted bezel. Is this a flip or a pass? In this case, it's a flip, not a great one because you'll only be realizing a profit of around 400 pounds, but still a profit is a profit and it makes a purchase of the Rolex Datejust Azzurro in 41 mil a risk-free one. Obviously there are hundreds of watches in the Rolex collection and I could go on for hours analyzing whether they are a solid flip or a pass. Conditions have changed quite significantly over the last few months. Some of those watches will come as a surprise, particularly even to me, to find a Daytona where the trade price sits below the retail price and it just goes to show how much damage the two or three retail price increases have had on secondary market values and on wait lists. And I do think for those models that have made that transition from becoming a flip to a pass, we will absolutely see shorter wait lists for. Thanks guys for watching. Please go check out beatthewaitlist-watches.com if you want to know whether a watch that you're buying or you're on the wait list for at the authorized dealer is a flip or a pass. Let us know on Instagram, send us a message. I'll do my very best to respond as quickly as I can. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. We also do this flip or pit, flip or piss. <laughs>